facilitate more and better dynamics internally and externally. Okay. Then, then we're, we're switching our agenda a little bit. If you remember, we were going to do process sort of training and then, and then talk about the timeline. From yesterday's meeting, what became clear to us is we need to dig into the timeline. We need all the time we can get for that. Um, so that all of you really know and are deeply committed to everything you're doing from now until uh, uh, May 22nd. That doesn't mean it will change, but it will. <laughs> but but you, will, you will be very clear, you'll, be, you'll feel like you own the agenda, uh, and you will be clear about who's doing what, when, and how. Um, that will be a time to add some agenda items, um, um, supplement existing agenda items, and so forth. Okay? Then, as part of that, um, particularly if there's any, any difficulty in your agreement about your timeline, we'll actually introduce the process that we're going to offer you to support your deliberation towards agreement. Right? We understand on May 22nd, you're going to make an agreement. Agreement to postpone, agreement to go forward, agreement for this process, whatever you're going to do, you're going to make some kind of a majority determined agreement. Until then, we're going to invite you to use a process that encourages deep deliberation. Um, that often is used in what's called a consent process. I've mentioned it to many of you. But what we're using it with how do you supplement uh, a conventional majority rules process with deep deliberation that ensures voice and input by everybody who wants to be heard. That's effective, that's meaningful, that's inclusive, that's participatory. Okay? Um, and then we'll check out and close by, by five. Why don't you give us, give, give, yeah. Good, we, we gave an extra window there. Oh, okay. that was me. That's nice, that's nice. We're supposed to end at five. If we get in at 4.30, that would be better. We won't go over five, but we may not go before. We'll see. That's fine. Good mistake. We like, we like good mistakes. Um, so, check in. Let me check in first, actually. Um, so, I've been up since four when I, when I realized I had to change the agenda and I started working on the agenda. And um, happily went back to bed at eight, so I'm actually doing okay. Um, and lots of communications with TJ and with Daniela and attempted communications with Judith in which there is no response to me. Um, I will share with you a letter that I wrote to her. Um, and, and TJ might, well, I'm not doing checking, sorry. <laughs> I am fine. I'm, I'm glad to have had at least a half hour head up, heads up, an hour heads up, which is not for me. Because in many ways we planned the meeting with her and the dynamics of this um, But we, we recalibrated it, and I'm looking forward to a productive and effective meeting today. Um, no, I see so I guess I'm um, also arriving already kind of fully immersed in what we're going to do because um, we've spent the morning reworking things and um, I, do, I do feel it's unfortunate that Judith isn't here but I think that um, the process that we're going to engage in is going to be really useful and productive so I'm looking forward to seeing that unfold. Yeah, um, I, I think it's great that we are going to work on our processes and communication. It's been a, uh, a frustrating morning, but uh, I'm glad that we have the four of us here, so I appreciate that. I am um, not feeling 100%. I'm not sick. I'm, I don't think I know exactly what it is. But we have important work to do, and we have to keep going. Um, I'm still grounding of arriving because I had a very busy day at work up until now, and I have I, like I may have a call that I may have to step out on. So um, I'm just like letting myself sort of arrive and see you all here, and. Um, I guess with that, I just like I appreciate, as I had said last night, but again, like I appreciate that we're taking the time for this critical issue because I think it it deserves our time, and um, I, I appreciate that we're carving out the time to do it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm feeling many things. One of them is sleep deprived. <laughs> it's uh, reeling in from the dynamics of last night's meeting, but also fully committed to working through this because we have a lot to figure out. Um, you know, I came away wondering if, uh, I always feel like there's been a narrowing before we even got here, and, um, we didn't necessarily have a chance to really talk about this, so I feel like, um, there hasn't been a conversation yet of what people's decision. You know, so I look at this and I say this is kind of like a decision making process, right? So, and I'm feeling uneasy because I'm not sure that's how I would base it. So, and uh, it's, we seem to be um, concentrating on places where there's been division and not on where there's, well, you know, I'm not where there's been, uh, not where there's common ground. So, um, the, and, and yesterday, in fact, you just said, since kind of speaks to that. I mean, it's, I feel there's a lot of responsibility that's placed on my shoulders in representing a constituency, and um, you know, I felt I was attacked a couple of times yesterday, and unnecessarily. So I would appreciate if people would not make this about you make this more about the process. Unless about personalities, unless about what you think, you know, my agenda or Judith's agenda or, you know, even what your agenda is, is that there's, you know, this, when we looked at the dots, is that one thing that I took away from that is that when there's a plurality of thought, we don't get into group thing, right? Um, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure we've got, I'm not sure we have the conditions for the progress that we need to make. And I want to make that progress. I want to get to a solution that is acceptable. And, you know, we got to stop laying little sticks of dynamite out for other people to step in. Thank you. Sir, Thanks. Sir, you, you looked at me with a little sixth dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. Please elaborate. TJ, we were friends. You and my husband were friends. There's, you know, I, I would have hoped that at some point you would let go of your bitterness. I don't know what it's about. Okay, so now we're going to do what's called an army of meeting. <laughs> uh, sit next to me. So we've been doing this for 40 years, all over the world. We know how to do it. And I would invite you to let me guide the process, if I may. May yeah? I? Go ahead. Can I? Okay. So it's pretty simple, actually. What happens is one person says, here's my issue, which you've just done. And TJ then repeats it back, and then you say, yes, you got it, or no, that's not exactly what I mean. So you have a chance to clarify your issue. After you clarify your issue, CJ having said, I, I, this is what I've heard you say. Not that I accept it, not that I agree with it, but I've heard you. You say, yes, I've been hurt. Then we say to TJ, do you want to respond or make a comment to that? And then you do the same thing. You, you summarize what you've heard from TJ. You ask TJ, have I heard you correctly? And he says, yes or no, this is what's missing. Right? So then the two of you have a very clear, shared understanding of what are the dynamics. Right? So that's what we're going to do in the first phase, and sometimes the only phase we do is definition. We may not move into problem solving today, but what we would work on then is problem framing. And given that I don't think we have time to move into all problem solving right now, because we have hard work, 
at least will have framed it and hopefully made it so it's discussable at a later time. Okay? Is that okay? Willing to go with it? Um, sure. So, and there's also, I understand, there's another... Hold on, I've asked a question. Willing to go with it? Yeah. That means I'm in charge. Okay? So you guys will let me monitor this process, including ask you to stop if I ask you to stop. Okay? So I need, I need one thing only from you two, which is process power. Content is all yours, but I'm in charge of the process. Okay? Hmm. Okay. Okay? All right. So Amy, let's do it again. So now tell TJ what's bothering you. Or what, when TJ asks, so ask the question again, and then Amy, you respond, and then TJ, you'll summarize, and Amy will say, got it, or no, you're missing something. So ask the question. So I asked you to elaborate on the little sits of dynamite, um, because I felt very pointed, because we were looking at you when you said it. And I, and I only think you can take it, because we've known each other long enough, right? Mm -hmm. Is that I've been paying attention, and you've said in public meetings that I haven't been paying attention. I care very deeply about this topic, and I've, div and I've, dealt, and I've been delving into it deeply, okay? I care about this. And I care about where the conversation is going to. I've been reserved in my comments because I've been create, you know, because I feel it's been important to create space for other solutions and for lots of voices. And we've gotten that, okay? One issue, really. So the one issue that you attached that were the sticks of dynamics. But one of the things that I didn't appreciate yesterday is you looking very pointedly at me when you talked about people not being responsive to the schedule. And I answered your email quickly, and I told you the dates that I have. And, you know, when Can we have... wrap it up. It's two right. things for him to remember. <laughs> it's really one issue here. Yeah. I mean, I've been responsive. Right. I was responsive right. to the... Right. Well, I was I think... responsive to the schedule, and I don't like the implication that... I haven't been responsible. Okay, good. Good statement. Now, now repeat as much as you can what you heard. Sure. Use her words if you can, and then say to him, yes, that was what I said, or no, you missed something. Right. Okay, so last night, I was, I responded to, to you on the schedule and made you feel that I was talking to you alone on not being responsive to the schedule. And you said you emailed me and, and gave me the dates that you were available. I give you the... Hold on, hold on. Did he, did he hear what you said or is he missing something? I, I gave you the constraints of what times I'm available during the week. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, so that's a little different. Okay, so, okay. so, just that. so in your email back to me, you gave me the, the constraints of your schedule when you were, right. when you were available. Right. right. And I've talked to you about um, meetings that I have coming up, like interactivity. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like we've had, I've sent you a few emails about my schedule. And so I didn't quite understand why you felt the need to argue with me about whether I was responsible or not. Okay. Sure that? Okay. So you, you've sent me several emails on, on your schedule on and schedule. what your schedule was. And, and yeah. Okay. So have you been hurt? Has, did you hear what you said? Is there anything missing in this movie? Yeah. Well, I, else you'd like to add? I hope that, you know, that if you have a need, that you would communicate that, because I felt I answered the need okay. and the request. Okay, great. Okay. So, in these, those emails, you told me very specifically Thursday and Friday you were okay. And so I went to schedule. Well, then you're responding? Street. Don't respond yet. Oh, okay. Finish finish summarizing what she said to make sure that she, she knows you heard her. And then you'll have a chance to respond. You felt like you were being responsive to me and what I knew you did and what I was requesting from you. you yes. Know, yes. Good. Okay. I think I think that's it. I think I think. I mean you began before you summarized this as saying you were feeling like there was a well, maybe that's enough. You've communicated it, he heard it. He repeated it back, you know he's heard it. Is that enough for that? Or is there more you need to say? Well, I, I sense that there is... Yeah. 
you know, the, when we first started organizing, I mean, this is, this is taking up a lot of the time. So that's, so right. keep it short. So the, no, 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 no. I mean, is it scheduling a retreat oh. over two days? It's a long time, mm -hmm. right? I was surprised when the response came back and suggested that we meet in Thursday morning. And I clarified, and I thought I was pretty clear that I have classes you know, okay. that I, I think I think that's enough. I mean, I think you've made so, your point clear, and he's, he's heard it. So yeah. you expressed it, and he's heard it, and he's reported it back to you. So now, TJ, you can respond, and then you're doing the same thing, which is respond back to him, saying, "This is what I hear you say," and and then if he's satisfied, we'll see where we are. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. So last night, in my remarks about the schedule, I was more responding to to your feelings of. You, didn't, you thought we'd be further along in the process. You thought that we would have had time to have already deliberated the options. And what I was trying to convey, and maybe maybe not well, I was trying to convey that we had a schedule that I put out there, which shows how we're, how we're making this decision process. And at least for that part, I did get emails from you about your schedule and your availability, but not about specific input on, does this look acceptable for us marching toward me? Okay. And I did clarify that no one had responded, and to me, no response means that looked okay. Uh, I think repeat back what he said to right, make sure he knows right. what and you've heard. So you have frustrations with the group in general on what the process looks like, and so I'm glad that. Hold we on, that's not what he said. Repeat what he said to you, and if you need him to say it again, you that you you feel like you've gotten responses on the schedule but not on the process from from you well, i think he needs to say it again you need to say it again sure i can say it again okay so, so what i was very specifically dealing with last night and and i was talking to you because because you were talking about the process what i understood is that you felt that we weren't further along in the process and you didn't have an idea of how and when the timeline that we were going to be getting down to the to the yes. decision on the 22nd may and so I felt that that had been conveyed in the schedule I sent out. And while I did get feedback on your availability, I didn't get any additional feedback on whether that whether you thought that process was well, so I thought that you were okay. And with I, I would suggest to you is that I Hold on, are you are you repeating what he said? I'm still not sure you've heard what he said, and that's the exercise. He needs to know that you really heard me. So what did he just say? If you need him to repeat it again, you can and make it shorter. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought... This is a listening exercise. It's uh -huh. about how do we listen to each other when we are in contact, which you have been and you will be. So I know, but how the backing you, up is... So how do you know that what you're expressing is what's heard? That's by checking it out, and that's what we're doing. So, so you need to be able to tell back to him what he's saying, where he says, I feel heard. And I don't think he's able to say that yet. So he's, he can say it, say it again, shorter, and then you can repeat it if you'd like. Can you try that? Well, I, I we're getting, uh, what, what I'm hearing is then. I'm also hearing where some of the sources are. Amy, let me control the process. This is, this is what I asked for. I need you to let me run this process. We can do it differently different times. Right now, the way this process works is just like you had your time to express your concern. I know. And but he I'm repeated sure. it. He repeated it to your satisfaction. Now he gets to express his concern until he feels like you've heard him and can repeat it to his satisfaction. Okay, That's how this works. This is a parlor game I have This is not a parlor game, so. Amy. This is how terrible miscommunication gets worse and worse. And this is how we write it back and say, let's be on the same page of what's going on here. Then we might be able to say, let's figure out how to solve it. But until we all know how we're framing and defining the problems, there's no way to solve it. So I'd really like you to try to listen hard to TJ's response and share with him what you hear him say. So TJ said that he has shared dates and an outline for a decision process, right? And that he has asked for our, um, our response to that. I responded first to the constraints of the dates. Um, and, you know, I... Amy, please. This is what TJ said. Yeah, not yeah, not, yeah. Not you. Well... What did he say? And that he has an expectation of of some response right. on 
the schedule. Yeah. Perfect. Great. That's it. Is that it? Did, did you I get so. the, yeah. the bulk of what yeah. you said? Okay. All right. That's it. Uh, the process. Yes. So that's Not it. Not the schedule, but the yes. process. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the source of the conflict right now. The source is a miscommunication, a misunderstanding of the message that you're sending to each other. And, 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 and what to do about that is exactly our next step of our agenda. And I would also suggest is that it is not clear because some of these communications happened before the upheaval right. of last week. Is that how what was given to us was a response? I mean, because we were scheduling the retreat right before last week. So the question I have is: is what you gave us? Is there what adjustments need to be made to that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Good. All right. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to our agenda. Thank you. Okay. So, so sort of some this framing from ten thousand feet up, which is all about this. Conflict is a fact. Is there drinks? There are, and we can take a, a minute break. I need. Yeah. I need. Yeah. Please go ahead. Everybody, if you want to take a break, use the bathroom, get some drinks, stretch. I guess I guess I'm just curious, just noticing, you know, different people's responses is like weird. It's a process that Jay and I are very kind of engaged in, so it's kind of second nature to us. But I'm wondering like when you're participating in the process or you're watching the process, how you're experiencing it. And you know, if you want to kind of share your experience of it or feedback on it, like did you find that useful? Was that challenging? I think that would be useful for us to hear us that we have a chance to maybe express what the process was like. Okay, let, let me I agree with you and let's put a time ban on it and use sure. your, your watch. So sure. no matter more than two minutes each person. Sure. And I think not dialogue about it. Just your own reflections on it. The okay. process you just did. Yeah, I have seen this exercise done before, and it's, it's a good exercise for um, making sure that people understand mm -hmm. listening and being heard. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm about the same. It's easy to talk past each other and not not understand that that's happening. see this process in the schools a lot. Um, I appreciate the willingness of two of my colleagues to do that in front of and I am I'm serious. I mean that's that's what I want to say. I, I appreciate that you're willing to do that. We're in a public meeting space and we have observers and so this is this is really challenging. And I just, if nobody, I would just like to acknowledge that in the room, that we are doing very challenging work in front of the public. That takes courage. That takes courage to simply show up today. And that's my debrief about this. Yeah, I, uh, I echo all the things that I've been saying. Who is it put beautifully? And I would just ask people to, you know, create space for each other, and especially people who aren't familiar with these processes. And um, it, you know, I remember your story about people telling you you can't do things, right? Yesterday. And I heard a lot of you can't right there. And that's my feedback to you. Um, I didn't really expect to do that. I actually thought we might do it had Judith been here. Um, oh, so I was and, and And that it <laughs> happened, um, I was ready to have an inter intervention, even though I took seriously Luisa's admonition to me a few weeks ago that this not be an intervention, really. Um, and I, I 
didn't expect that it would be until last night. Well, we did. Let me finish this. I'm checking. And and last night, um, given what happened, which I think is 95 percent about miscommunication, actually, um, including between me and Judith. I think we had a miscommunication. I think there's a miscommunication at so many levels. Um, I don't think there was actually substantive disagreement. And I think that says a lot about how we go forward. Um, there are disagreements on this board that are fundamental and value-based and important and meaningful and useful and democratic. It's great. But the process and communication um, problems we can address. And then the fundamental differences that you have to hash through are exactly what this is all about. And I agree with Louise. I've been doing this in the glare of the public and the, the legal constraints and the time frame is excruciatingly difficult. Just excruciating. So um, never go on, as we say. Okay, can we move on? Mm -hmm. the, the only thing I would say is that I think that there's more that we understand about what TJ's frustration was yesterday. And I hope that he hears my frustration in being called out. And I thought I would change that and instead he seems to clarify where he feels there's a lack of respect. Lovely. That's a great summary. Thank you. Thank you. That's really helpful. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Great process input. Please keep doing that. <laughs> okay. So, so 10,000 feet up for just really two minutes. So conflict is a fact. My life and my commitments are about creativity and art, and somehow most of my life is about conflict. I'm trying to change that so I'm more and more about creativity and communication and good process and and yet I and everybody else always get Myers back in the context. So conflict is, it just is, it's a fact, human relationships. It's only bad if it's destructive. It is fundamental to change and to progress. So our challenge is not whether or not we're going to have conflict. Our challenge is whether or not we're going to do it creatively, constructively. So, Good process can help us deal with conflict well. And that's really what much of today is about. How do we begin to use a good process for deliberation over difficult issues where there's lots of controversy? Which is the nature of democracy. And that's, you know, I have to say at a heartfelt level why I'm really disappointed Judith is not here. I think she represents a really important voice in town. I'm glad you are here. Um, and um, Ensuring that that voice is always at the table is something you'll have to do in her absence. Um, and she'll come back to the meetings. But today, we're making very fundamental decisions about your, not decisions, agreements about your timeline. So it's a process, it's a process decisions, but they are fundamental to your good, good function. So we can do the best we can do. So how can all of your work, and this is a giant challenge you have, be fact-based and fact-based and communicated as such. That's your mandate. That's your limits, right? The lawyer says you can do nothing else in commuting with the public, but be fact-based and communicated as such. So remember, I, I quoted that that lovely quote yesterday from Walt Whitman: "Be curious, not judgmental." Remember, I said that, and and I didn't tell you where I heard that. I heard it on Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I went in to check it. I went into Snopes this morning. Just think, did Walt Whitman really, this is at 4.30 in the morning, and I was there. did Walt Whitman really say that? Guess what the answer is? Yes. No. 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 It, was no. So it was a Ted Lassoism. It was a Ted Lassoism. You know where they got it? They went back, they did, they did digging, they found it from a, an advice columnist in 1980, talking to parents of an 18-year-old child who left her contraceptives in plain view. And so her advice to the parents was, be curious, not judgmental. <laughs> now, speaking of fact-based information, right? So where do we get our facts? Well, I got mine from Ted Lasso on Apple TV, and it was wrong. So where are people in Yellow Springs getting their facts? Where are they getting their facts? Social media. Social media, printed media, telephone. Telephone, you know, we have, we have email, and maybe our telephone is even worse. 
So one person says one thing, the other person hears something a little different, they communicate it to somebody different, and the next thing you know, Walt Whitman says, be curious, not judgmental. Well, no, he doesn't. But it's a good quote. <laughs> so you guys really are in Schitt's Creek without a path. No, I'm, not talking about the, I'm not talking about the film, the, the, the show. Sure. Randy loves so Well, I'm glad somebody else said it besides <laughs> Randy's favorite show, show, Schitt's Creek. <laughs> Good. Let me see you two can watch it. <laughs> yeah, please. I think um, that I agree with all of that. But I think sometimes we let... <clears throat> The, the comment that we do not communicate well enough or often enough, we hear it all the time. It's low-hanging fruit. And I think we let that dictate our behaviors, and then we run around chasing our tail. Because for some people, we will never be able to communicate enough. So I think all we can do is, is, is renew our commitment to being transparent and communicative, and I keep everything. So I can tell you every communication we put out, when you were required to keep electronic records, I can tell you everything we pushed out about facilities. I feel like we're very communicative. One case in point, last week was a, a bit of an oddity that we don't need to discuss again. I think we discussed that enough last night. But I think we have to stay the course because when we kind of get sidetracked mm -hmm. for that, mm -hmm. then we we keep missing the mark with the real work. Mm -hmm. And it's important to communicate, but, but we also have to understand that we can never communicate enough, period. Mm -hmm. That is just a fact. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, so we have a tough and shared problem of, of how, do you, how do you communicate enough and, and effectively and knowing that it won't be ever enough or effective enough for everybody. But how do you do enough? And that's, that's, that's a big dilemma, I think. And I think this critical inquiry dilemma, the, the, the liberation process we're going to explore, is one answer. That we make our curiosity explicit. We make our differences explorable. So I'm in favor of this completely. I think this is fine. I don't really agree with this. Why not? What's the matter with this? What's another perspective that can maybe help us change what we're already committed to? It might not make us change it, but at least we're going to hear somebody who doesn't agree with the approach that we're taking. So I'll, I'll teach this to you more fully. Um, but, but part of, I think, the effect, the ability to do good communication is to allow a diversity of views to have a good conversation about complicated issues. And that's what's happening in the next couple months. As you narrow from eight to four to two to one, that's going to be a deliberation about a diversity of views. The views in the room of the four, five of you and those who you're representing in the community. So I have a couple of assumptions that I think are shared values of all of us, of everybody in Yellow Springs, I think, and tell me if I'm wrong. That inclusion, inclusion is a major value for us in Yellow Springs. That we, we, we care about that deeply, fundamental to our sense of self. Education, excellence in education is a second fundamental value of Yellow Springs. If you look at our history, those are probably our two roots. History of Yellow Springs are probably rooted in that commitment to inclusion, most specifically in terms of African American former slaves coming to Yellow Springs in the mid 1800s. And Antioch College, one of the most innovative, creative, important education institutes, institutions in the world here in Yellow Springs. These are our roots. And everybody here, in one way or the other, is consciously or unconsciously committed to those values, I believe. It's my assumption. And, and I really love the way you reframe that. I wish we'd done that last week. If we hadn't been in such a rush, maybe we would have. That schools are in the center. For better and for worse, it's your burden to shoulder, and it's your blessing to offer. That all these other issues are lining up around schools. Right? I, I developed it a little bit more fully now. So inclusion, which 
which is sort of incorporates affordability and diversity. Right? There's a different way to see it. Diversity is not necessarily affordability. Right? Affordability is not necessarily diversity, but inclusion incorporates all of this. Then we have ecology. And as you pointed out, ecology can be seen in two ways. Reuse, recycle, renew, or new build for efficiency. So we have a value here, but we're divided on this value. And then we have green space mills line, which is a street deep value. And so I think this continuum is much clearer about, about what's fundamental and essential in this whole interaction. Okay, almost done. One more. This one's 20 feet, 20,000 feet. I'm a political scientist. I'm a student of American democracy, American pluralism and democracy. So I think our conversations last night began to get into very interesting philosophical conversations. I just want to summarize them really quickly. Um, participatory, pluralistic democracy is, I believe, what makes America great. Not again, still. Uh, there's a commitment here, and I've lived in many places in the world, which we fail to fulfill, and we fail in our original sins of slavery and, 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 and genocide of Native Americans. And with those original sins, we still, more than any other country in the world, have a commitment to inclusion. And I'll talk personally. I'm Jewish. Uh, my father moved to Yellow Springs because he couldn't have a job other places. Antioch accepted him as a Jew in the 50s. Our people have been annihilated um, throughout the millennia. America has been the best place for Jews anywhere, ever, continues to be. Even with the rising anti-Semitism, there's no other place in the world where Jews have been less persecuted than America. And I think that's true for a lot of collective black sheep. Um, and I was very proud of what you said last week. I'm very proud of Yellow Springs that we have the one gay superintendent in Ohio. It means a lot. It means a lot. This place is really special. And it's fucked up, too. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and, and a lot of that burden is on your shoulders, and that's not very fair. But what can you do? Okay, finally, I really disagree with you, PJ, yesterday about leave no one behind. That does have to be our motto. It does. We can do it. We can leave no one behind, at least in our commitments. In our actuality, can we succeed? Probably not as much as we aspire to. But this one little idea that I have that I don't think is very complicated, add a ninth fund to the Yellow Springs Community Foundation. That's an example. Maybe there are much better ways. But that's an example of how we can at least make a true good faith effort with teeth to say, if you feel this levy is going to price you out, we've got your back. We don't want anyone to be priced out. We need to pass some levy, and we don't want it to fail because people think their neighbors can't afford it. We've got to figure out a way. We can. We must. Okay. Well, I, will, I would like to specify that that is, that is something that we really cannot, I, I don't believe we, we can do. Okay, okay, is, I hear you. Yeah. And, and I have a second I, I think that's, a, that's a, a great value of the community to have. Good. It is not that. It is that while affordability and um, responsibly using taxpayers' um, resources is certainly a value and very important we cannot influence people's personal, uh, I guess. We, we, we cannot do that. I, I hear you. I hear you. And, and the one thing you can do, though, is to say, we hope the Foundation does something like that. I do not know that. I, I don't know if you can. We can't. We can't. So okay. if this is going to be picked up, it, it needs to be Good. picked up by the community. Great. I just would like to make a 30,000 foot Good. comment, and, and then I think semantics are very important. And so I love that effort that the commu some community members have said, like, let's make sure that we don't leave anyone behind. But I think um, if we talk about it a certain way, it, there's always a loop back to the schools and the children, mm -hmm. and this is why this community is not affordable. And that is not an accurate statement, and I just mm -hmm. ask that everyone just pause and think carefully. There are, are many reasons why this community is not affordable. And, and so um, I just don't want the schools to have to, to carry that because it, 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 again, is another false narrative. But 
I love the fact that the community feels strongly about this and wants to do something on their own to, to address that. Uh, I'd like to say that I don't know how you interpreted what I said, or even exactly what I said. Okay. You know, to, to be honest, remembering exactly yeah. everything is going to happen yeah. right now. Yeah. But um, I'm not against having everybody come up together. In fact, that's the ideal, and, and I like how you phrased it. Like that's what you should aspire to. But I think that that mantra has been used, and at a cost mm -hmm. to the children. And mm -hmm. so I think that there are people who are being left behind because we say we want no one to be left behind. And so I think that was more to my point to say that we're not may be fulfilling the promise that we could on our education right. portion. And to me, that is a big piece of not being left behind, because that is the promise of, of America and democracy, and that we have public schools that, can, that, that are beyond, you know, so, so it's not just the rich who have access to yeah. education, right? right? And that's, that's important. So this is a mini example of that more formal exactly. process, which is, this is what I heard you say, Yep. I disagree with you, and you say, no, actually, that's not what I said, or at least not what I meant. Meant, exactly. And so, thank yep. you. That's great. Yep. I appreciate I appreciate the clarification of three of you done, actually. I think that's really important. And I'm very glad there's a camera here. <laughs> For one, I have to buy I do not have a problem with the camera. It's got yeah. yeah. No, no wrong enough. Right. We all are right. not a problem with it. It's right. more it was the way that the process policies, by which the, that's right. I get that. We'll, we'll talk about that. Should be followed. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, I think I think where are we? Well, can I just say is that you know one thing that the community's gone through and exercise they've gone through lately is, you know, gone through the um, the demographic shift, you know, the report on demographics in the community. And I think it's very clear, um, you know, one of the big events, you know, was 2008 and the, um, the housing bubble burst, right? right? Mm -hmm. And that had a lot of consequences on uh, the demographics of the Old Springs. And people can see, people can see that effect. And, and they, want to, and they, and one of the things that when people get together and talk about the values of Yellow Springs is that they, you know, value that they are a welcoming community. I think of um, Cheryl, um, Cheryl's, uh, the panel that she put together um, around the, back in 2021. No, no. I mean, we need to move on. No, no, no. What I just say is that um, talking to um, the folks of Omar Circle and the history of the historic of that community um, and the importance of that history. I've gone on walks with um, Buck History in town. And this is something that, you know, Elio Springs feels very much as part of their history. And um, that, that impact of that economic distress moment, you know, is something that people still feel needs to, to be addressed because we've lost people, right? right? Right, good, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's let's move on now. And the exercise we want to do, all of this was by way of intro, and I think important in stage setting, so now we're getting into the work. So, the first thing we want to do is get some communication agreements. What do you, what, given the miscommunication, you know, whatever, how, however much it is or, or it isn't, there's miscommunication and resulting misunderstandings. And, and I used last night's issue around the video as a prime example. Um, and we can debrief it, but I'd say again, 90% of what happened was miscommunication. There was not actually a lot of substantive disagreement. There was process and, mis and, and communication problems. Leading to loss of trust and a loss of a board member at our meeting today. So it's very significant. Um, what do we need, is a question for you all to ponder and give us answers. What do we need to put in place to prevent this from happening again? How do we strengthen our communication processes going forward? So Danielle is going to give you sticky notes. Give us your best ideas. What are your best ideas for um, what do we need to put in place to prevent these kinds of miscommunications from happening again, or at least reducing them? And how do we strengthen your communication processes going forward? Suggestions that you have um, for those two things. 
Do we need to write the questions up or here? Okay. I'm happy to do any questions. Okay, so the question. Yeah. So they are um, what do we need to put in place to keep miscommunication from happening again? Well, that may be happening less. And happening less. And how do we strengthen our communication processes going forward? So prevent and create. So the plus is, is create ways to strengthen our communication, and minus is prevent miscommunication. So let's just read them out. We'll plus for later. Okay, so I, can, I can read them. So on the plus side is board protocols, uh, call. So I guess that's a call. call. Talk with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than using another email or text or something like that. Understand and address biases in what is discussed and emphasized. Yes. Using BCC and CC properly. What's that? That's our emails. In an email. 
like using the BCC oh, and the oh, CC. Kind of, it's a production. Kind of yeah. yeah. Follow board protocols, allow superintendent and treasurer to do their jobs, strong central images, touchstones. Strong central images? I'm not sure what that is. Can means. someone explain that? Oh, well, if you want to prevent miscommunication, is that one of the things that you do is you present a strong central image or um, some core community value that people can latch on to. So it's kind of like lots of words. Here's the meat. And small words, right? So it's, it helps to, okay, we're going to talk about this now. Remember, this is what right. we think about when we, right. this, is, this is the space that we want to mm -hmm. enter and kind of enter into that space. Nice. Nice. It's framing, essentially, right? Framing, framing and summarizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I'm just going to add the word framing as well. Yeah, intentional framing as well. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You've been kind of. Okay, and then we've got send feedback to the board president and superintendent. Be willing to speak your mind to the group. Transparency, honesty. Follow our process. Go through the board president and superintendent in a timely manner. And those are the, those are the positives. Great. Okay, so negatives. let's move on to the negatives. Oh, those are the positives. Okay, those are the those things that you're going to do to strengthen your community. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll sort them in again a little bit more yeah, so and see if there's any possible. And there might be overlap, right? Yeah. Because these two yeah. things are quite different. Mm -hmm. um, so then, in terms of preventing this communication, follow the procedure outlined in the policy. Read the policies. Do not shy away from discussing valuation of educational value. I'm not sure if I, if I understand this. Can I explain that? So that's fine again. Okay, so um, uh, the you know we've gone through a process of the last year. Um, just think about where we spent our time, and then think about you know in whose voices were featured, and maybe we didn't take as many opportunities to feature similar voices um, about the people who are the experts on educational values, such as our teachers. Mm -hmm. right. So is it, should, should we maybe add something in there about bringing in more voices if we did? It sounds like that's Yeah, yeah. Strange. No, and I understand, that, you know, it's, it's, this, this is kind of, what I'm hearing is specific education, like the, the ed educational piece. That's what I was saying. Yeah, about. it's just, I feel like we're, we've, over the past six years, is that there's been a very clear story out there to the public. We've sold one story very well. It's harder to, to talk about education value. Can I pause? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody has sold anything to the public ever. I don't like that language. I just, I, I oh, well, I'm sorry. But I mean, there's there's been a it, it's it's just one thing that I would say is um, that this is one problem that we have to overcome is that you know the public I think is convinced that the schools need fixing. Right, that there's facility issues, but what we're about is preserving educational value, right? Okay, you know, good. Right? So add that in educational value, preserve educational value. So it's, it's preserving it. So mm -hmm. it okay, good. Keep going. Okay. So follow up process don't go to the media or di uh, directly mm -hmm. through others on our own without consent of the full board. Mm -hmm. If you are working in a vacuum, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, ensure we allow superintendent treasurer to lead, so that's the reason mm -hmm. that's the other side. Request arrangements, but do not make them unilaterally. Mm -hmm. uh, use the tools or assets at your disposal distribution. Uh, right, district, district. So it's, it's actually similar to the, um, yeah, um, board members, uh, work through by delegating tasks to the superintendent and treasurer and other district staff as well. So um, delegation. But a lot of times that's 
Uh, so Change to you start. guys to them for the bill. Yes. Right. yes. We should right. be going to anybody else. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any questions about any of those? We will work break these up and make them available to you. And you have some ideas of what you ought to be doing positively and that you ought to be res uh, res resisting uh, you know. in terms of preventing. Okay? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're a little bit past time. I want to keep to our agenda because actually we haven't even started yet. The main agenda <laughs> is really the timeline. Is Everything there, follows from the timeline. Is there an opportunity to add, to add more to it? Sure, throughout the whole day. Keep adding. Okay. Keep adding. <laughs> you have more ideas about how can we, and we'll come back to it at the end, and we'll, we'll look at how we can act, act, actualize these and maybe revisit them, you know, as you wake up every morning. <laughs> so, um, we're 10 minutes past time, not bad. Let's take a 10 minute break and come back and move into TJ's timeline. And you're all input and commitments to what's going to happen, when and how, by whom, towards what purpose. Okay? Okay, so I'm just going to the timeline. Uh, so let's start by handing it over to TJ. Do you want to run us through this? And I noticed that like Jay just made a correction on yep. the date. So if there's anything to change, feel free to do that as you go along. Um, I'm just going to get out of the way. Can we correct this for the wrong one, Jay? Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so um, this is the one that's been in, in the email, right, that I talked about that um, the idea is getting us to a selection um, on, this is a different one, I'm used to looking at it, so, <laughs> on May 22nd, right, um, with the hope at that point that we have one, one plan, if we're going to have a plan for facilities, that's the drop dead uh, time, that is a board meeting, regular board meeting on the 22nd of May. So we're looking forward to that um, next week, so I'll be back number one, next week is the 29th of March, that was the time so far that I could corral it. And again, getting five, seven, nine schedules together is sometimes hard. Um, but at that special board meeting, um, we will have an agenda for it. I'm sure it had some great ideas of things that we need to kind of we send it to tie up and, and then really start talking about what is on the table. And if possible, if, it, if there is a way to do so, I would like to see a down select happen next week for at least a couple of the plans that, that we think may not be able to be viable going forward. We have eight plans now, which was maybe more than anticipated a couple months ago as we worked through this process. And um, there's been you know, a lot of things up in the air, including um, talking to OFCC and, and working at the new cost sets and things. And um, we're starting to get all that into us now. And that has been a um, only back in terms of when the state releases that data for us. Um, but on, on, uh, next week is the first first session where potentially there's some stuff to cover and then could, could start down slightly. Uh, that same day, what I actually happened earlier, is the uh, facilities core team. So that's Judith and Dorothy on the board. I attend those meetings where we um, can have one too. Actually, that's wrong yeah. because Mike is out of town. Mm -hmm. That has been. Oh, okay. Did we schedule it? Yeah, I think we skipped it. Yeah, we just skipped it. So that is just you gotcha. cross that off. Cross that off. All right, even easier. Yeah. <laughs> but but for the board, you know, to my point last last night, Amy, I mean, that, that's why Judith and Dorothy are so tied in because they're sitting through these core team meetings on the, on the facility mm -hmm. side that you, me, and and uh, Louisa don't don't want to see. No, I understand. Um, so. Can we change the time of the 29th? Let, let's have a run here and then we'll come back one by one. Um, April 5th is the next listening session. So one of the things on the agenda for the 29th is what do we want that format to be for the listening session, right? And then a part of that is also talking within the constraints that we have um, on, on our legal team on, on what we can do there. Um, the 13th is a regular board meeting. Um, at that point, we're hoping to have a financial analysis. Yes, we, we, yes, we, we will. will. Okay, so um, Jay will then start talking a little bit more because we've been talking overall cost for the for the plans, right? But we don't have how that pairs out to an individual taxpayer, and so that's that's what we're trying to get for on the 13th. And again, that's something that you need to get all the, the costs in for. So this is the exact right timing. Uh, I know people in the public have been asking for it. Can, so can you pause on that just yeah. a quick clarifying question? Did you just say that we will also have financial analysis for people in the public to be able to as, as, as have a, an there idea? There is an idea of, of what their, the yeah. 
their tax particular cost. What the tax implications will be um, for the cost range that we have right now. Okay, I didn't realize that was April 13th. Great. So once you down select, you'll say we have four more, and of these four, this is how much each will cost you. Is that right? Um, we, I mean, I won't say how much it costs individuals, but this is this is how we would fund these four options. We can say how much the project costs, etc. And, et and, and yes. So how? Well, we'll come back to this. Okay, I'm getting more into the Okay, good. Keep going. Um, so and then looking out at the end of April, um, I believe in, in um, I believe that the best. Thing so far with the most schedules lines up is that week of April 17th, having another special board meeting where we try to now select the two plans. I have, I have a date. So, yeah. if you don't want yeah, to. please. <clears throat> so we've known that we are going to have to slot some more meetings in here. Um, you know, life kind of gets in the way. Right mm -hmm. now, Mike actually is on vacation, which he mm -hmm. is much deserved, mm -hmm. right? So, um, he will not be, for example, at the meeting next Wednesday. He will be at the April 5th meeting. Um, he will be at the April 13th meeting if we need him to be there. And then the next meeting, um, I spoke to him this week. He can be, um, I was looking at that week, uh, Friday, April 21st. So that would be what I would offer. And here, here I might also offer the purpose of that meeting. We were asked all along to say, as we, as we try to go from here to here, kind of narrowly, there have been some questions about square feet and some questions about just what does the OFCC require. Mm -hmm. I can explain all of these things, but Mike can do it better. And so I'm happy to start this next week. But on the 21st, we were thinking about having the board, Mike, and the principals to go through the program of requirements. And so what the program of requirements is, is it says, here's how much square footage, let's say we're going to do an OFCC project. Here's how much square footage you get. And then it, it goes area. So there's the academic area. There's the specials area. There's the office area. And so um, he's got a program, a state program, that he can say, the state recommends that for your population in this square footage, you have two of these rooms. So we can always then say, you know what, based upon Yellow Springs unique needs, we might want three. So he'll pop in the number three there, and what that does is that auto calcs. It auto calcs any corresponding hallways you need or equipment. And so that at the very end, you get a larger square footage number, and he says, here's what the state will co-fund, here's what the district would be responsible for. And so if the principals are there, they can say, so that we can be very transparent that it's not Terry saying this, here is why, as the leader of this building, I am saying we need this academically. And I think that would be a valid exercise for that day. Great, thank you. Can you write P-O-R? So we'll come back to this under thing. the special section. This is it selected? Yeah. P O R. It's a program P of requirement. Okay. 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 We'll come but, back to this. But that's in some also more just select down to two plans. Um. You know. Or I, maybe that. That's maybe, 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 maybe that's. So that's question, mark, question, question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. I maybe, yeah. Good. Okay. Let's keep going, and then we'll come back. And it's, and there, it's, it's a TBD. You know. You know. We can see where we're at at that that April work session on the twenty first. If that date works. Um. You know, for what additional sessions we need. Mm -hmm. That's where mm -hmm. there's a, a decision point of what else we need to put on the calendar in order to, to make those sessions. So if we can't get down the two plans, maybe we do need an additional listening session, an additional uh, work session to say, hey, we're going to get down to these two plans um, in in on that date, whatever that date is. And so it's it's up in the air. Sometimes. And then we march toward, but ideally I think it would be nice to have two or even just one plan that people can mull over and then at the 22nd May board meeting is when we would say, okay, this is what we're, this is the plan that we're putting for. Okay, great. And so, it also, so the people understand, I mean, the, the total rollout that, that Jay has to do as the treasurer, you know, after the board, having been through this twice now, after you put um, an issue on the ballot, there's a lot of things that have to 
to go on there. Some of them are very procedural, but that's when you can go out to the auditor and get the exact numbers, it. and they can really start right on here. what the plan yeah. is. Okay. I, so that May 22nd, that leads to, just so everybody knows, if you do yeah, some back, know. Do you backward mapping. Yeah, I don't know. you have an extra mapping? sheet? Yeah. 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 Can you put up an extra sheet? Or do we, can we add it? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, we can do it now. So, so, so at that um, yes. May meeting, <laughs> the, board, the board would pass what's called um, a state consent uh, special needs resolution. The June 8th? Uh, May 22nd. Same day. Oh, okay. Oh, on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so then have the Danielle write it. Danielle, Daniel, Daniel, You can just say special needs. Plans, plan slash special needs. Okay. That's a financing requirement yep. that we will have to do. And then June 8th? Yeah. So there's, 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 sorry, that's, that's, that's the <laughs> There's a whole list. <laughs> and this is why we have the backward map. June, June 8th, and that's a resolution of necessity. So do is that at a board meeting? That that's is a board, board meeting. meeting. That's our regular June 8th meeting. Uh -huh. um, <coughs> these are the, I just want to make sure this is how we got to, we need to make a decision. By May 22nd. Correct. Basically. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. By the May meeting, we need to know right. what we're doing because right. we have this to do in June and this to do in July. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Now, on, um, I'm not finished. <laughs> yep, no worries. Yep. July 10th, this is not a board meeting, but this is our deadline to file, um, uh, special needs resolution with the with the Ohio Department of Education and the Ohio Department of Taxation. Um, okay. Is there a regular? Oh. Uh, oh no, that's a filing. Day and bond council. Yeah. yeah. But just it's yeah, yeah, I it's a date in between there. There, I know there is action the, that we take. The next is indeed board action, and that would be July 13th. Okay. Wait, let me get another sheet. That's another regular board. And I'll have this sheet for everybody on the 29th. Actually, I'm just going to do it here because it, it's not so okay. quick to stick up. So tell me again. So uh, July, July 13th, 13th, and that's at our regular board meeting. Okay. So the board passes the resolution to proceed for bonds and income tax. Then it's back to Jay and the lawyers on July 25th. <laughs> Just one second. And then July 25th. Mm -hmm. is and that's a deadline to file resolution of necessity with the tax commissioner. There's there's less deadlines for uh, property tax or income tax, but when you do a combination like that is... And we're making an assumption there. I do want to say that. We're making it. Then the next date is August 1. Mm -hmm. And that is um, deadline to file resolution of necessity with... No. Deadline to file election proceedings. With ODE and the Ohio Department of Taxation and the Board of Elections. You can just say deadline to file multiples. Mm -hmm. And then the last date, Danielle, is the important one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is that? And that is November 7, Election Day. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a November date. <laughs> 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 but you see how you have to really backward map and yeah, make sure mm -hmm. that we. Have all of to the end and work backwards, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of these days don't involve the board per se, other than what we had to put in place on a certain day. So, so we'll put the who in, let's put the who in, the who in, you know, all of these. Maybe put it up in the, well, yeah. Who has to be involved in the July 13th? It's a regular board. Board is May 22nd. Yeah, you guys have got yeah, it. Got it. Uh, June 8th. It's treasure. And June, July, is, June 8th is the board. Yeah, that's oh, the board. Board and staff. And community, right? And then July 13th. Same thing, board staff and community. Right here, it's up there. Oh, no. oh I'm sorry. Yeah, you Just, I, I, was, I have a conflict with the July 13th. 
Okay, we're going to work through every, okay. everyone in detail now in a minute. Um, All so of these are, are deadlines, so we can have meetings prior to, we yeah. cannot yeah. go beyond these. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And any okay. other queries to add? Yes, so you can do all of these things early, but you cannot do them late. All right, here's what we suggest to do for an efficiency of, of supplementing this, adding to it, taking away. I'm not sure taking away, but so if you think you have something that meet, must, must be added, and it's really important to add it, Super important. Suggest it on the blue note and to write it down and put it where you want it. So it could be a supplement to an existing agenda. In this agenda, we must do this. Or it may be a new date. So that probably would be blue. If you think it's, so that's, that's most important. Blue is most important. Yellow is, um, it's really important, it's very important. That's second priority. Should be done. And red note is, it would be really lovely. I doubt it will happen, but boy, it would be great if this could be added in and we can make progress on this. Okay? And these are all additions or these changes. All additions or changes to your existing timeline. So why don't you put that one on top of it, Daniela, so they can okay, access it. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. see that there. I'm just going to write. Yeah. So maybe it's, I'm not interested in derailing this process. I think we should move forward. I just want to make a note that without one of our board members here, yeah. this essentially is going to have to be done all over again or in some format. Yeah. And um, it just feels like uh, that's going to be more use of our time. So I just well, want to acknowledge that. I can work the schedule piece. So, so there's conflict on schedule. Yeah. I can work that. We can work that via email. Um, in terms of process, I mean, we have a court. And we're going to go forward on what the process is. And I am OK marching forward on that. Is it useful so. to share the letter that I wrote to Judith? Where I said, what's the cost and benefit of you know sure. pending? Sure. Is that useful? Um, yeah, I think it would be. I think it would be. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really wanted to talk with her. She wouldn't talk with me. Um, so I wrote her. And this is what I said, which is basically making it very clear what are the costs of, of not upcoming and what are the benefits of coming. So she was fully informed. So I'm sorry you're not willing to communicate with me last night nor respond to my request to talk this morning about you telling me you were upset and would not attend this morning. And I think we had a miscommunication too. Uh, there was some exchange here that I didn't understand. I don't know if you saw it. But there was something that happened that upset her and I didn't quite understand what it was about. Something around the communication with the video. So I too was involved in a miscommunication that I don't really understand. So I think we probably could have cleared that up. I don't think that's why she didn't come, but I don't know. I hoped you would have changed your mind and decided to I found out from TJ at 11.30 that she told him, she copied me, that she would not be attending. Um, our plan for this afternoon is to begin exploring how and why miscommunications have been happening and what to do about this going forward. Then we will work on agenda setting and process planning. I want to let you know some of the potential costs of not attending and the benefits of attending. Benefits of attending today, we will be discussing how to ensure the kind of miscommunication resulting in misunderstanding and loss of trust, like that over the video, like stemming from the lawyer's advice last week, like how to develop and share fact-based information for the community. We'll be discussing that. We will be doing essential work of agenda setting. That is what you as a board and staff will do, who will be involved, and how effective process facilitation will be done, and by whom for each agenda. Cost of not attending. Process tools will be shared, like how to best include and take seriously all voices like those in the minority when deliberating about important decisions. Agreements about communication, agenda, and plans will be finalized without your input. You, Judith, will not be able to contribute nor represent the voice of those who feel you are represented. That will be your choice, but perhaps their loss. For the sake of a, of a successful process that Young Springs so badly needs over the next couple months, I hope you will change your mind and join us today. Please call if you want to talk. So I think everything's explicit and upfront, and that, as TJ says, you have your quorum, and you can make your decisions and move forward. You'll decide if how, how and in, in what way you want to move backwards, and we can mm -hmm. talk about that towards the end of the meeting. But uh, I would suggest you just proceed. And happy for any comments or suggestions different. So, Louise, what do you, you know, feel? 
over the past two years, year and a half, we've, we've made certain we had everybody there. No one's trying to play a game of, of not having someone at a meeting or something. So if we can accommodate schedules, we will. And so it's, I'm disappointed that she's not here to match the schedule. But that schedule's mostly what I've been putting out. Uh, except I, got, didn't have, I still have the facilities working me on that, but that's not happening. Uh, so I think that these dates all work. Um, they're the ones in here, they're a little, little past. I think I only went up to the 22nd. Well, May. I'm sure they won't miss any additions that she might add, but right. maybe you can get those later. Yep. If That's right. And so I'm still sure. willing to accommodate things, but uh, at the same time, I'm not to be held hostage. Okay. Thank you. 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 you. said time earlier. Is there a time you I could mean, start? I I have to work out with, uh, I think I can get there, but it would help me if it started at 7, it would help. All right, so that's the sort of thing that, I, that, that would probably be a blue note, mm -hmm. and you'd put it up there and you'd say start at 7, mm -hmm. okay? So so take some notes, uh, maybe maybe give them a key again. So the, the blue note is for must be done, yes. the yellow note is for should be done, and the red note is it would be nice. And so we're... Can I take some and pass them on there? Right? So you're just putting them up on the agenda that you're supplementing or changing or adding. Pass, pass some notes on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's conflicts. So, you know, let's, let's see if we can't figure that out now. I think you said you had a conflict in July. Yeah, so, so. Okay, put that up there and we'll, let's work it out. <laughs> Yellow should be done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't have blue. Jacob, you pass the blue. Leave some for Amy. Can we take a pause real quick? I just need to. I need a break. Um, sure. Sure. We can. We'll just do this process now in the next 10-15 minutes. So feel free to take a break and you and you do it, and we'll come back.